we are so we are so excited you're here joining us live for another demo and a sneak peek of the software repurpose. I'm Yang Pratt, the host of the In a Weekend podcast and the creator of the In a Weekend series of classes. And I am here with the man himself, softwarepreneur and tech man extraordinaire, Hanny Mora. Good morning. Thank you, Yang, for that introduction. Wow. Absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> so as you are joining in live, let us know where you're tuning in from today so we can see where people are. And if you are joining us on the replay, pop in a hashtag replay below and let us know because we want to make sure we're here serving you first and bringing you information that you can implement today and information and features that you can look forward to in the coming weeks. So Hanny, tell us about what you're going to show us how to do today. One of the features that currently is inside of Repurpose for all of your users, what are we gonna dive into today? All right, awesome. So today I'm gonna to talk about a feature that it's been out for some time now, but I realize a lot of people either are not aware of it or um, are not using it. And that is taking your audio podcast and converting it into video snippets, shareable snippets, or people call them audiograms. I like to call them snippets. Um, but the whole idea is you can take bite-sized content and share it on social platforms, um, almost like teasers to your episode. Mm -hmm. uh, you, like th you can post them up to you know any platform you want. Uh, it's a video file you can upload to Instagram, LinkedIn, et cetera. So I want to show how that works, how you create the snippet, and um, kind of where you can publish it automatically and where you can publish it so you can uh, you know, share it out to your social platforms. Yeah, and I, while you're bringing that up, I'm just gonna jump in and say that this feature is so amazing because something that I always talk to my students about is, you know, create one thing really well, do one thing, do one video a week, and then use your software to create all the other pieces they can share across platforms because they're the right size, they're the right mm -hmm. dimensions, and all the fun features. So I love this. We're really diving into repurposing that singular piece of content. Awesome. And Kim is joining us live. So hi, Kim. Thank you for being with us. Hey, hey Kim. Um, and uh, yeah, you mentioned a good point about uh, formats. I mean, these platforms, everyone's got their own idea of the ideal video format, like Instagram wants it a square, uh, Instagram TV wants it vertical, Twitter, you know, there's some, you know, everyone's got their own specs. So with repurpose, we give you several options that you can pick between vertical, horizontal, or square so that you can be compatible with those platforms. So, um, I think I'll just jump right into the demo. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, you can you can walk and ask questions along the way. I'll keep an eye on the comments as well. Um, so that, um, well, I'll try to keep an eye on the comments because I got <laughs> the screen share going, but um, drop them in. If we don't get to them right away, we will get to them. So I'm just Absolutely. gonna do this and um, just kind of walk through how to kind of set up your, uh, your snippets. So the snippets feature, um, what I'm gonna demo now is something that already exists. So you can do this today. And so the only the kind of prerequisites are that you have an audio podcast connected to your system. Um, if you don't have one, you can go to the, if you don't have it connected to your system, you can go to the connections page, choose uh, audio podcast and add connection, uh, put in your iTunes link or your podcast feed and you're good to go. And the other requirement is kind of either a Dropbox, a YouTube or a Facebook or a Google Drive. So basically somewhere where you wanna send the video to afterwards. So my demo, I'm gonna go from audio podcast, create a snippet and send it to Dropbox. So, so I have my audio podcast and Dropbox connection already set up. So I go to my workflows page and I'm gonna make a new workflow. So I'm just gonna give it a name. I'm gonna say Hanny's podcast snippet Dropbox. Again, this is just a name so I know what it is. Later on when I come in, I don't get confused with all my workflows. <laughs> And uh, so first thing I do is choose audio podcasts. That's my input, that's my starting point. And I'm going to convert this audio into a video because I do want a video snippet because video is important because you can put that on a lot more platforms, meaning you can put that on Instagram as Instagram story, Facebook story, Twitter, et cetera. You can do a lot more with a piece of video. So what we're doing here is we're converting the audio into a video. Um, but what you'll see here is by default it's the full episode, but you have the option to choose snippets. Mm. 
So I'm gonna say next. And now where do I wanna send that little video clip? Um, I wanna send, in this case, I'm gonna send a Dropbox so I can just show you how it all works. Um, but you can send it to Facebook directly. You can even send it to Twitter directly as well. But, um, but just for this demo, I'll start keeping it simple and just send it to my Dropbox as a video file. And from there, you can do whatever you want with it. So as soon as I do that, our workflow is here. And um, let's let's see. Let's go into settings first. So in the settings, if you're already familiar with the podcast or YouTube, it's very similar settings. Um, but so here's where you got to make a decision. You got to decide mm. what what are you doing with this? Are you doing, let's say, are you doing this for LinkedIn? Are you doing this for Instagram TV? So depending on where you're planning on doing this workflow, uh, this video snippet, then you choose either horizontal, vertical, or square. So let's, I'm just gonna pick vertical because let's say you're doing this and you wanna make a, a snippet for, um, let's say Instagram TV, because that's kind of the, the, the popular place to be, I hear. <laughs> uh, so you take vertical and we have six templates or you can upload your own just like usual. And these templates are very simple. It's basically a background image that you can you know, design your own and upload. But I want to show you what it looks like. So if I click preview, you can get a feel for what it's going to look like when you're done. So there's four main areas. There's on top is basically the snippet title or like think of it as the quote. Like what you're doing is you're taking an audio snippet of your guest or yourself saying something that's you know kind of important or engaging that you capture people's attention. So this is like your headline, typically something related to the that little snippet that you're talking about. Um, and then this is the waveform. We generate the waveform just like we do normally for the other videos. So we place it right below. We take your image from your podcast feed. So there's nothing to do here. Um, and then we automatic or by default, we take the title of the, of the full episode and we kind of put it below the image. But these, um, these pieces can be customized. You can, when you go publish a single episode, you can change this title on the bottom. You can change the title on top and I'll show you that right now. But and him, is, we, we're not able to see the bottom up underneath your image because there's the the try repurpose oh, for free. There oh, there we go. Go. Perfect. Now we can see it. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. It's just uh, actually I think I shut that off. Just to get this banner out of the way here, so we get more of the good stuff. Is that better? Oops. Is that better? Yeah. One more screen. There you go. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So yeah. So. Basically, the top is like the headline almost or the, or the quote from your guest or whatever you want. But typically, it's something that's engaging, almost like a headline, but it comes directly related to the snippet that we're going to clip. And then below, by default, is the full episode title. The repurpose will set that up for you. But you can change that to be anything you want. You can, you can even say, hey, visit my site or download this, whatever you, whatever you want. Um, uh, you can customize that when you make your snippet. So let's go back to repurpose. And... I'm just going to choose this purple one by default and say save. I'm not going to go into all the settings. Uh, just, I don't want to kind of overwhelm you, but just keep in mind, you know, verticals typically for Instagram TV, maybe even you want to do short snippets for your Instagram stories. You can do that using the vertical template. If you're doing uh, LinkedIn or you want to put on LinkedIn, you, I would recommend doing a square and a square is very similar. Uh, it's a square version with a title, waveform, image, and then some kind of subtitle. Okay, so I just I like vertical, so I'm gonna do with vertical and hit save. And if I go into my episodes page, I will see, I'm gonna show you two things. So ignore this bottom part for a second, I'll explain what's happening here. Um, but these are all my episodes from my podcast. This is the artwork. So just like, just like you're used to before with the full episode. Now you see a new button here, this like a little scissors, a little uh, cut icon or snippet icon. So what this does is let's say I want to take this episode here and I want to make a snippet. I click on the snippet icon. It takes a few seconds. It's going to load the audio file into your browser. And by default, it's set to 30 seconds, but you can change that in the settings or you can change it right here. I can say, say I want it five seconds. And then you, you literally just drag this bar across to the point that you want. And then you can, to listen to the snippet, like starting from the exact starting point, end point, you can say play snippet.
So you can, you know, listen to it. And if you want to adjust it, you can grab, it's a little bit tough here, but you can grab this end and shrink it. So basically you decide what exact clip do you want to share out. And then um, it gives you kind of how long the, uh, the episode is. If I drag this over, sorry, the clip is. So let's say, you know, Instagram's got a limit of one minute or LinkedIn's got a minute of 10 minutes. You know, you gotta you get to see what the duration is just on the bottom there. Uh, just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna do like a 30 second clip. I can drag this around, boom, boom. If I'm happy with it, I give it a title, uh, say, uh, whatever I want. I can put a quote and say, this is, this feature rocks. You must listen to the episode, whatever you want. <laughs> so this is kind of like the teaser headline text that you put. So you can set that up here and say, create snippet. And what happens is that you'll see it below the episode. So this is the snippet. The cool thing is, I can go ahead and publish it, but before I do that, you can create as many snippets as you want. So every episode, you're not, it's not like a one-to-one -one ratio. So you can do every ep an episode, you can take three or four snippets. This part rocks too. <laughs> you must listen. <laughs> so, you know, I can do another one. So you can do as many as you want and they'll be ready to go. It shows you the start time and end time here. And then whenever you're ready to publish it, you can just go ahead and hit publish and you'll get a chance to update that text. So by default, it puts the text that we put in as the snippet title. I like that, so I'm gonna leave that here, but I can change it if I want to. And then that text below the image, mm -hmm. it's by default the title of the episode, which is in my case, episode two, but um, I don't want that. I say, I can, I can have a call to action here, you know, learn more uh, or subscribe on iTunes, you know, whatever you want here iTunes. So you can put another text below the image. But typically, I, I like to tease with the episode title, you know, episode two. Yeah. And what I think this is cool too, if it's going on an IGTV and you want them to take another action, you could literally say something like, listen to the full podcast link in bio. Because all of yeah. our links are, because there's not any live links in Instagram, which is kind of a bummer. But if you direct them to your bio, they can go listen to the full episode. So that might be yeah. a good way to get them to listen to the rest of it yeah. by giving them this call to action here, which I think is fantastic. Yeah, so that's, that's a great idea. That's a great idea to do kind of call to action in, mm -hmm. the, in the video. So I'm gonna hit publish now and it's gonna enter the queue. And just like all the other videos in a few seconds, it's gonna start processing and in a few, few minutes, it'll be ready. So while it's doing that, I wanted to show something else. Um, this one probably not many people have noticed. You'll see, you notice when I created this episode here, sorry, when I created this mm -hmm. workflow, all, all this episode number 26 already had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 11, 12, like 13 snippets already queued up for me. How did that happen? Wow. So what we did was we said, hey, if you in your show notes already put timestamps, for example, like, let's see if I can log into my Lipson account quickly without Let's see if I remember my password here. Okay. Um, this is not my, that's not the right account. Uh, let me see, because this is really cool. Uh, if you have show notes, bear with me for one second. If I can show you, it'll make a lot more sense. But the idea is if you have timestamps in your description. It just pulls on, them right over, right? Pulls them right in and it basically, essentially it, it cues them up for you. So you don't have to make these snippets. So I'm already here. So let's see if I can find that episode. It was called episode two, I think. Uh, I shouldn't say it was episode twenty six. Happy, happy podcast day. Okay. Oh, it goes right underneath the podcast that it goes to. Yeah. So these are all okay. the snippets that belong to the episode here. Yeah. Got so like it. for example, these two snippets belong to episode two, um, episode twenty six. Oh, brilliant. Okay. All these there. Okay. So let's see. Episode, what is it? Happy podcast day. I think it was this one. So if I edit this one, is it here? Yeah, edit. Uh, and go to the details. Hmm. Where is it? Maybe that's not the right episode. Oh, here. See how, how I have just, you don't have to have these brackets, but um, if you do, it's fine too. But if you have a timestamp in your show notes or on your podcast host, one minute, 138. We automatically pick that up and 
kind of get your snippets ready for you. So we go, we start at this time and we use the default in your workflow settings, which is 30 seconds, or you can make it a minute. You can change that default value, but by default it's 30 seconds. So yeah, one minute or five plus 30 seconds. So we have this clip, this, these are all ready to go. I can just publish, 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 publish. publish. That's fantastic yeah. because you've simplified it. You just put it in there once. Now we mm -hmm. have your full audio, you have your full video, you have all these different snippets that are multiple things. So again, literally from one podcast episode, we can create 10 or 20 little different pieces that we can mm -hmm. keep sharing. So if you have 20 episodes and you make even 10 little snippets and you use these things, that gives you what, 200? Yeah. Different there pieces you that you can share on repeat because likely if someone sees one of your audiograms today, if in three weeks or three months you play it again, they're not going to remember that. However, we're just reminding them of the content we've already created, which I think is so brilliant. And I think this is something as content creators, we forget that mm -hmm. the stuff we created previously is still relevant to today. So we really need to go back and pull those things out and put them in a loop to share continuously. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. I mean, you got the only kind of warning I would say is because it's video content and you don't want to do this on certain platforms. For example, like you don't want to upload the same video on YouTube multiple times. They don't right. like that. Um, right. But if you're not sharing a snippet um, on Twitter, then a few months later you upload the same video again. Yes. I don't I don't think that, like some platforms may may complain and but some of them may not. So just be careful. Just you know test that and play around with it. But definitely yeah. YouTube. You know, if you have YouTube, have, you don't want to duplicate. If you have Absolutely. 10 snippets, you know, you could share them all at different times. So you're exactly. not having to repeat them over and over again. But it's literally the same one piece. We're just yeah. we're just sharing different sections of that. So if you have a guest yeah. and they've had a great quote, I mean, not only can you take out the text and make a meme of that, you have this audiogram as well. And for mm. your guest to then be able to share that because it is video and it catches people's attention like no other, I think that's such a gift to our guests as well. Yes, absolutely. And uh, this can be fully automated as well. I, just, I didn't mention that. So right now it's in manual mode, but if I go to auto mode, essentially these snippets will just automatically show up in your Dropbox. Just, you know, these 10, 12 snippets here will just show up, will get published and show up in your Dropbox. So Amazing. if you're really preparing, you know, if you know this is this is possible now with repurpose, you can go in and put these snippets in here in your Lipson account or whatever podcast host you're using so that, and then you turn on the auto publish feature for this workflow that we just created, then you don't have to log in to repurpose, make the snippets. You just let it happen on its own. It's that just, is brilliant. So that's, that's so, so great. We can automate it. So just for all of you listening, if you already are auto pushing your podcast and you have your audio creating a video already and you go in before you publish this and you put all these pieces in, that's how you can get really, really, really smart with your marketing because while you're doing other things, working with your clients, creating new content, repurpose is taking all of this content for you, automating it, and then all you have to do is share it where you want to share it. Amazing. Exactly. exactly. So let's have a look mm -hmm. to see what it looks like. So we did this episode number two. It's all done. Um, I clicked this uh, I, I icon. <laughs> you should open up my Dropbox and boom, there it is. Oh, fantastic. So this is the quote. And then if I hit play, it's going to start. I got the waveform going, got the, uh, the link below. Sorry, that, you know, the subtitle here, title, uh, it was all automated. I just kind of put that in there and I said, go. That's so great. So my question is, because you can create it in three different formats, do mm -hmm. you need to create three different workflows, one for each format, or is one sufficient to do it all? That's a great question. Uh, right now, it's set up so each workflow has one input, one format, and one okay. output. So yeah, you, to answer your question, you would have to create it. Um, let's say you want one that's square and one that's vertical. You'd have to do two, uh, two workflows for that.
Okay. But that's something that, you know, that's kind of bugging me in the back of my mind. Like I'm thinking how, you know, down the road, we'll definitely want to add a way where you kind of save you a little bit of time by just taking an existing workflow, maybe duplicate it mm -hmm. and then change the setting. Like we're going to look at the improving that to make that a little more efficient. But at the moment it's uh, one, one input, one output, one, uh, one set of settings, yeah. you vertical, horizontal per workflow, but there are no limits on the workflow. So you can make as many workflows as you want. And that's so great. And if you're using that show notes feature, like Hanny just showed us for all of them, it really is as simple as creating the workflow three times. It's still going to pull those, those quotes mm -hmm. through just in different formats. So right out of the gate, you can use all of these different snips anywhere you want. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. So this is a good reminder for myself too, because I don't always put my show notes inside the description on my podcast host. I sometimes will do that after the fact. So mm -hmm. this really helps me think that I really need to think a little bit further ahead, put them in so I can fully automate this feature. Yes. And uh, just a little side note as well, like these links, if you do publish your episode to YouTube, uh, which I highly recommend as well, like the full episode, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube automatically does something similar, automatically makes links in your YouTube description, mm -hmm. sorry, timestamps in your YouTube description automatically clickable. So someone can jump around your episode Brilliant. by clicking on the description. So that's, a ben YouTube does that for you. I can't take the credit, but <laughs> by having it in there, we pass that along to YouTube's description. And then all of a sudden, these links are clickable on YouTube, so someone can jump around your video on YouTube. Ooh, easily. I like that as so well. So it's definitely worth it to spend the time and get. I mean, here it's pretty. I think it's a it's a lot, and there's about twelve of them per episode. Mm -hmm. That might be quite a bit. It all depends how long your episodes are. But if you do a couple, do you know, say two to five per episode, highlight mm -hmm. and the key features. I think that's, I think that's better than nothing. Um, yeah. That way, your snippets are ready. Um, and it's just it, it'll save you a lot of time. It's a little bit a little bit upfront, but it'll save you a lot of time um, in your in your yeah, flow. That that is such a a great idea. So again, putting out time up front is going to yield a lot of big results for you in the end. And again, if you remember, we're only using one video or one audio to create all this. So right out of the gate, once you have a have a workflow for yourself, and you know that when you do a podcast, you're going to do those show notes, then the rest will be taken care of by your amazing software handy. So thank yeah. you for doing all that because that is a really huge thing because I know people pay a lot of money to mm -hmm. send their videos to editors to pull out these snips. And now you're saying you don't have to go anywhere else. You can do it inside the software. And I think that is huge. Yeah, yeah. I think I, pe people have requested this feature a while ago. We released it a while ago. Um, I'm glad we have an opportunity to show it because it is really powerful and it's a really it's a big time saver, um, especially if especially with this automatic thing where you can yes. put your timestamps right in the show notes and then not have to worry about it. Uh, so what I showed earlier, we just did a snippet to Dropbox, which is cool, which is awesome. Uh, that allows you to grab from Dropbox, you know, upload it yourself to LinkedIn. Um, in the square format, I recommend, or Instagram stories or Instagram TV or Instagram feed, all that good stuff. Um, but we also have a feature where we can direct publish to Twitter. So wow. we support Twitter natively or directly. So meaning that I can make a workflow. I could quickly show that. I mean, yeah. I, I think I stopped sharing my screen for a second. No, I didn't. Sorry, there we go, boom. Okay, so if I go to connections, I haven't added this one yet, but all right. So you'll see right now in this, you know, when you log into your account now, you can see Twitter as an output. That's right, Twitter as a connection mm -hmm. option. If I say add Twitter, yeah, and use Twitter. Uh, let's see if I remember my password. <laughs> yes, all right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we're all good. I connected my Twitter. I can go to my workflows and do the same thing. I'm just going to say snippets to Twitter. Podcast, snippets. Now this time I have Twitter. So same kind of deal. Fantastic. I'm not going to publish it, but basically it's the same. Um, let me just see where to go. 
Oh, that's a snippet to Twitter. Yeah, so view episodes. Um, you know, you do the same kind of deal when, when I hit publish. It just shows up on Twitter. It doesn't go to my Dropbox. I don't have to upload it to Twitter. It's just, it's a video. Really? So it's not sharing any link. It's a video uploaded to Twitter. Um, there are some restrictions on time on Twitter. So we, we kind of manage that for you. We, we don't let you go more than 30 seconds if you're doing a Twitter workflow. So just keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, it's on, and then this is direct published to Twitter. So you had that flexibility to go Dropbox, Google Drive, directly to Twitter. Uh, you can even go direct to Facebook or to YouTube. But my recommendation is, um, I would say Facebook, you might want to test full episode versus snippets. Mm -hmm. Or you can do both if you want to put them on different times. Uh, but YouTube, definitely go full episode. Twitter, for sure, snippets, because there's a limit on it. And then IGTV and you know Instagram and LinkedIn, I would do, I would do snippets, but maybe longer snippets, uh, okay. because I think you have up to 10 minutes mm -hmm. on IGTV and on LinkedIn. So depending on how long, if your show is under 10 minutes, do the whole episode. Yeah. But if you're more than that, you can do, you know, one or two 10 minute snippets on LinkedIn and Instagram TV. So good. So let me ask you this question because if this, this is something that I might need going down the road is a little cheat sheet that I could find maybe inside of my, my dashboard where I know which platforms need square and which ones need vertical and where I want to go horizontal and and maybe just like the time frames for each one because I think as people add these new workflows and they add connections like Twitter that it would be really handy to know kind of going in like what we're what we need to create for that particular platform. Yeah, I've done a lot of a lot of kind of studying and testing, um, especially with the new features coming out, which I'm mm -hmm. going to demo in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, so I have all these notes kind of put everywhere, but that's a great idea. I just made a note to myself to Fantastic. Come up with like a that. <laughs> PDF, some, writing software, you click it, it'll just say, all right, here's kind of your cheat sheet. Yeah. Max length on LinkedIn, max mm -hmm. you know, on Instagram, blah, 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 blah. You know, recommended yeah. sizes for these platforms. Awesome. I like that. Perfect. And so now you're gonna you're gonna share some a new feature that's coming down the pipe. So backing up, we, we now have learned how to create these snips, how to put them over in Dropbox or Google Drive, wherever you want to put them and store them. And then we have the snips direct to Twitter. So by mm -hmm. the end of this episode or by the end of today, once you watch this video, you can literally have that in place in just mm -hmm. a matter of minutes, which is so, so good, saving us time always. So Hanny, tell us about this new feature. All right, I just wanna say hi, just a quick shout out to Kim. <laughs> thank you for being with us. And yeah, thank you for, for commenting. And also Michael as well, he's a fellow Canadian. He's also in the house watching. So thank hey, you guys Michael. for being here and all the, all the feedback. All right, now, this is uh, super exciting. I, I, I'm, like, I'm dying to get this out to the public. This is, uh, um, I've, been, I've been geeking out on this feature, getting it kind of optimized, fine-tuned, and you know, we're really, really close uh, to getting it out to you guys. So what I showed you now was taking an audio podcast, audio converting into a video snippet. Um, so, but now what's coming is the ability to do a video snippet. So you have a video, i.e. a Facebook Live, uh, i.e. an uploaded video that you've uploaded to Facebook and make it into snippets. And not only into snippets, into engaging, I, want to, I, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say, I don't know what else to call it, <laughs> Gary, Gary V style snippets with a headline and some cool stuff on the captions and I, it's just really gonna blow your mind it blew my mind I, i'm maybe i'm biased because uh um i love this stuff but anyway let's just jump into it so yeah. the whole idea is i'm going to show you how to make a take a facebook live actually the one we did last month you and i okay. and create a little snippet and turn it into a vertical and or square. I'm going to demo vertical, but you can also do square video with a nice headline on top and some magic captions. Let's on see it. Bottom. All right. I'm excited. So let's go back to workflows and I'm going to say create new workflow. So I'm on my test site now. So keep that in mind. Uh, you won't see these options yet, but you will in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to say video snippet 
the Dropbox. So you can think of it as almost like a teaser clip or taking clips of your video and repurposing them as separate standalone pieces of content. Um, so like you're, you're building another video out of a video that you've already created. So okay. it's just it's almost like you're multiplying the videos. The video is having babies and, it's, uh, <laughs> you, and that content is still valuable on its own. So I'm going to say video snippet of Dropbox. I'm going to, in this demo, take the Facebook Live we did last month. And from my page, and now do you, want a, do you want a screen share handy i don't see your screen oh i'm sorry <laughs> i'm like yep i i was boom there you're so go. excited i know I'm so excited. i jump right in okay let's well, back right up again so create a new workflow i'm gonna jump here and say video snippet i'm glad you told me otherwise i've done a whole demo and nobody would have seen it <laughs> so video snippet to dropbox All right, so I'm going to choose Facebook Live, the one that we did last month, mm -hmm. from the repurpose.io page. And now you have the option to do a snippet as well, similar mm -hmm. to what we saw earlier Fantastic. with the audio. And now you have the mm -hmm. video snippet. So I'm going to say next. And in this demo, I'm going to just send it to my Dropbox. But you could send this directly to Facebook. Uh, you could send this to YouTube, just like normally, to Twitter as well. So those features will all be there. Um, and then um, if you want to go to platforms like LinkedIn and Instagram, right now you have to go to Dropbox mm -hmm. or Google Drive and then manually upload it. But hopefully, at some point down the road, we'll get direct integration with those. OK, so it's a video snippet to Dropbox. So there's our workflow. I'm going to go in here in the settings really quick. And now you'll see. Soon, you will see a new option that says, by default, horizontal, like we normally do. But now you can change it to vertical or square. And you're going to have a couple of new options. So you can choose. This is going to look a little better. It's going to give you a preview of what it looks like, so you get a better understanding. But essentially, we're going to have a title on top. Um, I want to do black title with white background. And you'll it'll make more sense in a few seconds once I... Uh, Oops. Once I show you what, what it looks like. So I'm going to choose my background color. There's a progress bar that's going to show up. So I'm just going to keep that as the default red. Turn on the progress bar. And then you have the option to take the transcripts that are generated by Facebook and automatically burn them into the video. So good. So okay. I'm going to turn that option on to yes and say save. <laughs> so let me explain what that means. So actually, let me start processing this video and then I'll go back and I'll explain. So if I go to my workflow now, I'll see the video we did last week, Q&A session one. Very similar to what we did a few minutes ago. I'm going to say make a snippet and then just kind of hit play. Oops. Just bear with me. This is our test site. So uh, it's going to be a little glitchy, but OK, there we are. So this is the video we did last week. I can do similar. I can kind of grab, uh, sorry, set a starting point and an end point. Let's say, you know, this is about a minute and 14 seconds here. I can kind of play that little segment. If I'm happy with it, I give it a title. I say, this is so awesome. And say, create snippet. So it's all it's very similar to what we saw earlier with the audio, but now you can do it with video. So when I publish, it's going to come up. It's going to show me the title. I can put a subtitle below, uh, but I'm going to get rid of that right now and just say, instead of subtitle, I'm going to have it play the captions from Facebook. So you're probably thinking, well, how do these captions get generated? I'm going to show you how that works on Facebook. But let's just get this going, and I'll step back, and I'll explain. So I'm going to have it title, download the captions from Facebook and say, go. All right, it's queued. Start processing in a few seconds. OK, awesome. So on Facebook, on pages, I'm not sure about groups, um, but I'm 100% I'm, I'm only certain on Facebook pages. You can go into your video section, whether you're uploading a video or you're doing a live video. Oops, sorry, it's just a little slow when I'm, because we're live streaming here. But 
you will have the option to, this is a video we did last week. I'm gonna edit this video. I always forget how to edit a video on Facebook. <laughs> Bear with me for one second. So if I take an existing video and I go and edit it for my Facebook page or business manager, wherever you wanna get to it, there's a section called subtitles and captions. So Facebook, I think recently, I, I don't know, I've, I've noticed it recently, basically has an auto generate mm -hmm. so that it just generates this caption for you. And then you can click here and just fix it up. It's really fast. You can spend a few minutes and just, it does a pretty good job. And as soon as this loads, it's going to give you all the captions here and you can go in and just fix it up. And when you save it, basically it's going to add it on to your Facebook videos automatically. So, mm -hmm. so there's nothing to do with repurpose. This is just cleaning up some captions on Facebook and turning on the feature on Facebook itself. And Facebook recommends it. They say it's better engagement. So someone can watch your videos on Facebook without having to have their sound on. And you know, it's just better mm -hmm. for you. So and it's, it's good to do anyways, even if you're not doing repurpose yet. And I think the stat is, I think like 70% of people watch videos with the audio off. Mm -hmm. It's a huge percentage. Yeah, so it's definitely like you'll see here, it shows you the uh, <clears throat> captions. So whether you're doing repurpose or not doing repurpose, highly recommend start doing captions or uh, either yourself or you know hire somebody to spend a few minutes to just clean up these captions for you. So most of it's it's already done. You just go in and just fix up a few mistakes. It's, no, it's not too bad. Um, it's actually pretty good. So when the magic happens is, I'm just going to close this page because it's really uh, slowing down my live stream here. So what happens is when this is should be done shortly, no, still processing. Anyway, I have a sample already done that I can show you. So what's the result of repurposes, we have something that looks like this. So what happened here is we took the video snippet clip, we put the title nice and big so that this is all part of the video, this vertical video that we created. So this is actually perfect for Instagram TV. And we have the progress bar so that people get a feel for how long the video clip is. So good. And, and then the captions are following along nice and big on your Instagram video, it's on your vertical video, which is probably what you're doing is probably Instagram TV. So this all happened automatically and I can create as many snippets as I want uh, from a single video that once you caption it once, you can create, well, you know, I would say five to 10 clips and you can share them out as their own videos on uh, Twitter, on Facebook. You can share them obviously on Instagram and LinkedIn by going to your Dropbox. So this video, mm -hmm. this saves you a ton of time. Like if you were to do this manually, uh, these video snippets with the captioning and stuff it's just yeah it's a it's lot just of time work. a lot it's of work time consuming i and i've done it this way and the reason i stopped was because it was eating up so much time and just really wasn't worth my time to do it then but knowing this is coming down the pike this is amazing because again one video we've created audio snips and now we can create video snips in the next month or so like you said earlier you're really multiplying your work with one piece of content. And again, as a content creator, this is amazing to me because I can actually step back and produce less content and better content and then use these features, these snips to push up my content more frequently. Yes. And um, so if we kind of step all the way back and we say, okay, and with repurpose now, well, soon when this feature comes out, you can just focus on going live. Yes. Um, like this is probably what I'm going to be just kind of encouraging people and you're probably encouraging people to do this right now is go live. That is your primary source of content. Yes. Go live. I'm going to put my face back on here so that we don't. Uh, yeah. So you go live from that live content. You can have it go to an audio podcast, mm -hmm. have um, snippets, now videos soon video snippets created out of it so you can have three or four five six other videos that are shared that can be shared on social platforms like twitter instagram linkedin 
with captions and headlines so that they're they're like really engaging videos because when you go live it's great but all you see is just yeah. face and especially on i notice on linkedin and instagram when you put your title and description even on facebook actually mm -hmm. you don't really see what the video is about like when you're scrolling a feed you don't know what that video is about you yeah. just see a face you're like okay i recognize that face maybe i'll stop but if the headline like the headline is part of the video now um with the snippets and you're like whoa okay i want to see this he's talking about repurposing content i'm going to stop so you're putting in the title plus if i'm at work and i'm scrolling my phone and i can just watch this <laughs> clip without even having the audio on because i can just read the captions and and get out of it so it's just like a double like a double positive going on here because you got headline and then you got the captions mm -hmm. now people might think oh wait what if i don't do captions uh you know or i haven't got to that stage yet not a problem you, you don't have to have the captions on you can still create the snippet and then you can have what we did with the audio snippet is your own call to action mm -hmm. text on the bottom you can say you know learn more on or subscribe on itunes or follow us on instagram or whatever you want as a call to action and you don't have to take advantage of the captions but if you do i think it's powerful like i think this is like yeah. powerful and it's powerful because it's easy so you have to just focus on going live then going back and cleaning up the captions yeah on facebook and that's it from there you have a podcast you have a youtube presence because if we can send it to youtube then you can have um, content ready for uh instagram and linkedin and then we can also push out to, to twitter and you can i showed you a snippet but you can take the whole episode you don't need to do a snippet so if your live broadcast is 10 minutes long take the whole episode caption it we can make a 10 minute video in square format or vertical and you can use that full 10 minutes on igtv so you know if you're worried about making snippets you know, if that you feel that's time consuming you don't need to do snippets you can do the full episode so it's it's exciting i'm excited and uh, we've been trying to tweak this to make it all optimal for all the major platforms especially linkedin and instagram that is super super exciting and i'm thinking to myself well maybe i need to do my solo episodes at 10 minutes or less so i don't mm -hmm. have to do any extra work it can just be pushed all the way i have that same video formatted captioned ready for igtv and i can actually queue those up i can schedule those things so again, this is amazing. And, and like you said, for my students, I always have them start with video. And then from video, we're gonna create all these pieces. So again, that singular piece of content that you put your heart and soul into every week, mm -hmm. use that as your primary, like the, the, the base point where you start every week. And then you can share all these different pieces on so many platforms. And you've created multiples of yourself and mm -hmm. now we can automate all this, which is just a brilliant thing. So yeah. good. I like what you said about 10 minutes. Like 10 minutes seems to be like the magic number because I know LinkedIn's limit is 10 minutes. Instagram TV is 10 minutes for most people. Um, so, you know, if you can get bite-sized content to 10 minutes, even a podcast, 10 minute audio podcast, it's just yes. good, like it's a good amount. You're not, A, you're not overwhelmed right. and B, you're not overloading. That way you can do more often. Right? You can produce and do one on Mondays and one on Thursdays. Like you can maybe do it twice a week, just yeah. keep them shorter. But that I like that idea of a 10 minute chunk because it seems to be what these social platforms are, are at least aiming for LinkedIn and Instagram. Right. And that's so good. And if we can schedule our weeks to know, okay, on Tuesday, I'm going to go in and, and record some podcasts and I'm going to keep them under 10 minutes. And then you press push out that good content by the end of the week, that one con piece of content or two becomes 10 or 20. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go crazy, maybe 30 or 40 from mm -hmm. again, one time of, of sitting down to get the work done. And yes. to me, that is the most powerful thing about what you've taught me as a content creator that you know you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We're gonna help you take your really good content and put mm -hmm. it in different formats, different lengths, different looks. So even though it is the same content, people get to consume it in a different way, which again, especially if you're really short with your content, I think people really appreciate the brevity so they can tune in and then go on to the next thing. Yeah, and uh, Kim's got a really good point here. It's like basically there's no more excuses. <laughs> yes. it's, it's simple and it's quick. 
And like we've been talking about for the past few minutes, it's create the one piece of content. That's your starting point. And then you break out into several um, styles, formats, um, lengths. You can break it down, even if you don't want to break it down. Like you have the flexibility. Like I'm, you know, you, you got to do testing with your audience and stuff. But I think like, honestly, like if you keep your content under 10 minutes, mm -hmm. then you're, you're even saving yourself more time. You don't even yeah. need to worry about snippets uh, with the exception of Twitter. If you have a presence on Twitter, you have a lot of following on Twitter, then you got to bring it down to 30 seconds. Uh, but if you're, you know, me, myself, I don't have a big presence on Twitter, so I don't really focus too much on it. Okay. Uh, so, you know, 10 minutes is like a, the magic number that will get you everywhere, uh, like basically compatible with all the oh. platform without doing any uh, editing or slicing and dicing. Oh and then, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Kim's got another question. Will you let us know? So as soon as it's available, uh, we're going to send an email broadcast out. We'll post it in the group. Uh, so all the customers will get notified that it's uh, available in their account. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. And like, I just got to stop tinkering. Like, I'm always like, oh, what if we do this and do this and this? I just want to get it out to you yeah. guys. So you can, you can give me the feedback, like me, like our team, the feedback. So we can say, all right, this is um, this is great. Or maybe I don't like this. Or can we do this? So. I always find getting it out sooner. I keep reminding myself, getting it out sooner and get real customer feedback is uh, is the way to go. So, yeah, I'm excited. Um, yeah, just what you saw there was running on our test servers. Uh, we're hoping to get that out. Yeah, I would say honestly, probably two weeks, maybe less, depending on the testing. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, and I, right now it will start with Facebook. So, I, I like Facebook as a platform because a Especially if you're going live, you're set. You just go live, do the captions on there. I mean, it does most of it for you. You just got to obviously clean it up. And then that's it. From there, you're yeah. golden. You can go to YouTube, audio, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but then down the road, we're going to have the options so you can upload your own captions if you have your own transcription services. Now, we'll expand on it, but I think in the beginning, it's just going to be Facebook. This caption feature with this resizer will be uh, available for Facebook uh, to start. Talk. Oh my gosh, so good. So if you're tuning in live or catching the replay and you found value in this video, we would love for you to share it with your friends who are marketers because what I see more so often is that people are frustrated because all these little pieces take so long. But now Annie has just showed you behind the scenes how to make this happen quickly so you can take one piece of content repurpose it and really multiply your efforts without any more work. So there is no excuse anymore as to why we aren't all being able to create all these pieces for those people who follow us and who want to connect or learn from us because Hanny has made it so easy. So be sure to share it. And if you have questions for next month's sneak peek and like a little tutorial, drop them below because we want to know that, again, we're providing value to you. You're getting excited about what you can do with these pieces of content that you have. So really, you can literally be everywhere. People will see you on multiple platforms. And that, my friends, is an amazing place to be because you know you can focus on content mm -hmm. and then really multiplying it out and pushing it out everywhere. Yeah. So Hanny, I want to thank you so much for this tutorial. I have a whole desk full of notes right now. So nice. I know that I am going to go set up these little snips because that was a missing piece for me because I was doing it manually. But now that I can do it automatically, mm -hmm. as you say, <laughs> that's definitely a huge win for me today. So thank you. Awesome. And thank you for being here and all the great questions and everyone, Michael, Kim, and everybody who's been asking questions. And if you still have a question when you're watching the replay, just leave it in the comments below. And, you know, we're happy, myself, Young, are happy to answer them. And we'll, you know, looking forward to next month. We're going to do this on a monthly basis. Uh, so we'll give you guys a heads up uh, when we're going to do it next month. And, uh, you know, you're welcome to leave questions for next time as well. So yeah. if, um, I think we're good to go. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to you next month.